Hello, I'm Anish Barrett and I've got a, a life in lockdown for you. It's a couple of months since I've done one because the, the pandemic seemed to be quieting down and everyone hoped it was finished and would fade away. But it's obviously that it hasn't and we're, we're heading for another uh, wave in the autumn, especially in England. We're already on this rule of six and restrictions uh, seem to be increasing. So I'm asking the question. Is Islam a threat to the West? Uh, before the pandemic, it was all about terrorism and bringing new laws in. Is Islam a threat to the West? Well, I don't believe it is, actually. Like all religions, I believe it's man-made. Christianity is man-made. God has no religion. Jesus is not the head of a religion. He's the head of a church. And the church are people, not buildings or organisations. And the Bible tells us in Peter we're made out of living stones, not granite and bricks and mortar. Jesus' church is an organism, not an organisation. And the illustration is of a human body with all its diverse parts. Well, it's not a business, the Church of God. It's not a social centre or entertainment centre, as some of them have become. Well, my research and understanding is that Islam was started by the Jesuits and will, like all religions, including Christianity, join the Catholic Church and become part of the one world religion. Mainstream Christianity is already rushing back to the Mother Church. Many charismatics are uh, joining the Catholic Church and maybe are leaning towards it. And a lot of the doctrines that have infiltrated the evangelicals are Jesuit doctrines and, and they don't even know it. Well, I'm a structural engineer and when the Twin Towers came down, I, I knew that it was a controlled explosion watching the photographs. Uh, it certainly wasn't caused by a plane. And anyone with a knowledge of structures and buildings will know that it was a controlled demolition. It was a false flag by the West to start the war on terrorism and pass laws to enslave us a bit more, and it worked. I don't think any planes have been hijacked in the last few years. I've not heard of any. And yet the laws passed to restrict us, the airport restrictions, the security, it's still in place. After these events, things never go back to normal. The new normal is not the old normal. And terrorism is part of the plot, to, to the net to trap the whole world and put us in fear, because fear is about control. How is it that Sweden, who have not had a lockdown, have no more, had no more cases of corona than any of the rest of the world that have been locked down? You know, dictators use fear to control and dictate to its members. Now we're not in fear of terrorism, but a pandemic, and the pandemic is causing terror in people's lives, so it is a form of terrorism. And that's why we're having another wave, to keep us fearful, frustrated, so that we'll want the vaccines when they come. Someone put on Facebook this week, do you know anyone who's died from the coronavirus? And some people said yes. They knew of an odd person. But in the same period, if anyone asks those same people if they know of anyone who died of cancer or heart attack or road accident or other diseases, the statistics would probably be much more than the corona. Yet we're notified daily by the media there's another case of corona. Somebody else has died. Uh, daily, we're bombarded with it, but they don't tell us about malaria. They don't tell us of the people who died with flu and that it's more than corona. So, something's not right. Well, I don't believe the vaccines are the mark of the beast, but it, it'll be another move towards control and tracking, especially if they put these invisible tattoos in the vaccinations that they're talking about. I'm not scaremongering. Scientists are discussing these things in, in journals and, and medical journals and scientific journals about these tattoos that could be used. I'm not saying they will be. So I'm not scaremongering. However, I do want Christians to be aware 
of what's happening of this so-called pandemic. And I want you to plan for the future. Think about it. The people who are controlling the world are carefully planning this one world system. It's And the one world church, of course. And we're now in the second wave in England. Well, churches won't go back to the situation before the outbreak. So you need to think seriously about the future, especially ministers. You need to think what you're going to do. What will happen if the government ban church meetings altogether? What if they ban the Bible as a book that's not politically correct? Don't think these things can't happen. History shows us it can. What if churches were banned altogether? as they were in Eastern Europe over, under communism. And it happened in the French Revolution in the 1700s, late 1700s. I'll, I'll read you a quote I took off the internet this morning. During the period known as the Reign of Terror, this is the French Revolution, episodes of anti-clericalism grew more violent than, than in any modern European history. New revolutionary authorities suppressed church, abolished Catholic monarchy, nationalised church property, exiled 30,000 ministers and killed hundreds more. That's not so long ago. Christians need to understand the one world government will be a form of communist dictatorship. So these things are possible in the future, I believe. So we need to think seriously about the future and, and not listen to the voices that are proclaiming a wonderful revival and that the virus is going to go in Jesus' name and we're going to smash Satan who's caused it. Read your Bible about the events that will happen in the last days and stop listening to preachers who are saying peace, peace. So I'm pleading with you, I'm asking you to think seriously about the future and prepare yourselves now before you get caught out because the warnings in the Bible about the last days are all about being caught out. The scriptures like this, watch and pray that that day doesn't catch you unawares. That's the things I read in the Bible. So the time's gone, but think seriously about what I've said and plan for the future. Think what you're going to do. You need to have faith in these last days. You need to have courage. You need to stand because we're all going to face this persecution. The time's gone. I'm going to do another lockdown from time to time as I see things happening. God bless you. Have a wonderful week and stay strong in faith and be courageous.